Author Jay McInerney, whose debut novel, Bright Lights, Big City, catapulted him to literary stardom in the 80s, joins us now to discuss Bright Precious Days, the latest in his trilogy about a Manhattan couple straddling the city's intersections of art and literature and power and money with varying states of grace. Welcome, Jay. It's so great to have you here. That's a, that's a pretty good description. Actually. Uh, <laughs> can, can, I, can I use that? Absolutely. <laughs> please do. Please do. So we are once again invited into the world of Russell and Kareen Calloway. What is it about this couple that fascinates you enough to write three books about them? Well, I, I first uh, introduced them in a, a short story that I wrote immediately after my first novel, Bright Lights, Big City. And, and um, you know, I, th I think all of us know, especially when we were younger, that, 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 that sort of model couple, that ideal couple that, you know, they're, they, you know, they're glamorous, they're good looking, they seem to have it all figured out, they give cocktail parties. And, <laughs> and, and I knew several uh, of those couples when I first came to New York City, and I kind of, um, I kind of liked the idea of exploring um, uh, that sort of, of, of marriage, uh, in part because, of course, there's no such thing right. as, as a perfect couple. And, of course, the ones I'm talking about all sort of broke up a few years well, that's later but what I'm fascinated about reading about Russell and Kareen because they don't split up they, they you know they weather infidelities yeah. but yet they stay together is it important to you that they stay married yeah I, I, it must be because <laughs> uh, at, at the risk of spoiling uh, uh, the end of the book uh, they they do in fact stay together and uh, I'm Honestly, as someone who was on his second marriage when I first wrote about them uh, in my in Brightness Falls in 1992, um, I wanted to explore, uh, you know, my road not taken, and I wanted to try to imagine how uh, how you know monogamy was a, was could be a viable model, so but particularly in Manhattan, which right? Is not very conducive, I think. Exactly. Monogamy. So, is are you the author Jay on some level envious of Russell's ability to stay married through all of this um, up and down and? Yeah, well, I, I wouldn't trade my life for anyone else's, but but you know Russell uh, for Russell is kind of for me the road not taken. Mm -hmm. You know, if I had not. Uh, if I had not become um, a novelist, I think that what I, I would have done was become a, a, an editor, which is which is what he is. And uh, and and so uh, and I imagine, you know, what if I had married my college sweetheart and managed to remain uh, married? Um, so so he he's kind of my alter ego, and I and and. and to me, he's living his life out there in Manhattan, and I guess every ten years or so, I, I revisit that life. That life, and and, and this book is and set usually against the backdrop of some crisis. Which well, well, that's what was bringing <laughs> to my next question because this book is set right before the financial crisis of two thousand and eight hits New York. Why did you pick that period? To set the book? Well, you know, it, it was such a fascinating period because on the one hand, you have, you know, as we all remember, uh, the 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 world economy seemed to be melting down, and and you know nowhere do you feel that more acutely than than New York City, the home of, of Wall Street and the financial industry. Um, but it was also interesting because of the election of two thousand and eight, uh, and uh, you know you had this sort of countercurrent of 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 many many people feeling very hopeful about the election of of President uh, Obama and in November of two thousand eight, you know looking back on those events some four or five years later it seemed to me that that was an extraordinary moment in New York history and and of course you can't help looking back on it with a certain kind of nostalgia and, and, and sort of sort of sadness for for you know unfulfilled hopes and dreams but uh, it just it just seemed to me an amazing moment in New York history as as was 9/11 uh, the, the the previous the subject of my previous book about these would you say those two moments in New York history were then were extremely significant for our lifetimes? I, I think yeah, so. I mean, yeah. I certainly, you know, I think anybody who was here will, yeah. ne will never forget September 11th, although New York is a very forgetful place, you know. I mean, the, the past is, you know, if you can remember where, where you had dinner yesterday. And, 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 you know, and, <laughs> yes, and, that's so true. And the future is, can I get a good reservation tonight? You know? But clearly, you know, you love New York, regardless of the, you know, the, the ups and the downs that your characters go through. And New York, that tension between the people that come here almost inevitably to pursue their art and then are faced, faced with the temptations and all of the... Um, Corruptions of the city. That tension is so central to so many of your stories. I think. Yeah. Well, for me, New York City is the greatest setting. It's 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 the most dramatic backdrop for for 
uh, for the human comedy, I think. And, and I, I, I wasn't born here, I wasn't raised here. I always wanted to come here. Uh, and and the, the day I arrived, I, I, I felt that I was home. Right. And um, it, the city's changed so much since I came here, and yet I, 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 I still love it, and I can't imagine being anywhere else or, or writing of, about you know, I agree Anywhere with you 100 percent. I, too, came to the city in the 80s as a young dancer, so a little bit differently. <laughs> but I feel exactly the same way about it. I can't get enough. Yeah, it's, it's I, you know, I love, uh, John Updike once said, a, a real New Yorker is, is someone who, who, who believes that anyone who lives anywhere else must, in some sense, be kidding. Absolutely. And I thoroughly agree. <laughs> I agree, absolutely. <laughs> now, really quickly, looking back at all of the novels that you've written, looking at your career, is there one book in particular that is particularly particularly dear to you or is that like choosing between children? Well, my, you know, the, the book that I'll never escape and that will probably be in the first line of my obituary is, is Bright Lights Big City, which, which was uh, a very surprising uh, success and, and changed my life for better and for worse forever. Uh, but I, I think the one that I like the best is the first book in this trilogy. I mean, I'm still absorbing this one, but it's called Brightness Falls, and it uh, was published in 1992, a long time ago now, and it introduced this this married couple, Russell and Corrine Calloway, that I, that I still seem to be fascinated by. <laughs> so are you going to write about them again, or is this the last one, do you think? You know, I can't... I, I don't know if I can let them go, but on the other hand, I certainly... You know, I don't want to follow them into the nursing home. Right, right. I mean, I, 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 want, I want them to have some residual it could gla be a, glamour. It could be a frisky nursing home with and these two. You never know. I, Before we let you go, because we don't have a lot of time left, I want to say this is sort of a homecoming of sorts. You used to have a wine column indeed. here at the Wall Street Journal. Are you still was, writing about wine? I, I am. I, I had four happy years uh, here as a columnist. I, I, I'm, I'm now uh, the wine critic at Town & Country magazine, oh, and uh, it remains a happy avocation for me. Uh, uh, a uh, hobby about which I'm very passionate. Well, next time we'll have to lift a glass here when you come to talk about your books. Thank you so much for coming to see us, Jane McInerney.